We're taking a look at Alba, a wildlife adventure, which is a simple and serene creature collection and exploration adventure set on a small Mediterranean island. The game is currently available on PC and Mac, with possible console plans coming in the future. When I looked this game up on Steam, and it was recommended to me because I've played Journey and Flower in the past, I knew I had to play Alba. After playing it through, it honestly reminds me of Pokemon Snap crossed with the indie title A Short Hike. Alba A Wildlife Adventure is filled to the brim with adorable animals and a calming atmosphere, but does the gameplay hold up its end of the bargain? Let's get to my review to find out. Hey guys, it's Cody with Indie Game Pulse, where we bring you the hottest indie games with the coolest memes. Before we begin, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you can be sure not to miss another indie game review or countdown. Thank you for your support, let's get to the review. Alba, a wildlife adventure, follows the story of a young girl who we meet while with her grandparents, presumably as she's living with them. Her grandparents are sweet and loving, with an avid affection for nature and photography, wanting to document and remember the fleeting moments. The game quickly fast forwards 10 years when Alba returns to the island for her annual visit and again meets up with her grandparents and her good friend Ines. Together, Alba and Ines take it upon themselves to start making a difference in their community and their environment. The crux of the story focuses around the mayor's plans to develop the rundown nature sanctuary into a hotel. and the opinions of the community are surprisingly, but realistically split. Can Elba and Ines do enough good deeds and convince enough members of the community to petition the mayor to stop? You'll have to play the game yourself to find out. And let me tell you, this game is wonderful. It's just a wholesome game filled with wholesome characters, besides that scumbag mayor, of course. But I appreciate that the game portrays different perspectives in a light and natural way. The folks in the community who want the hotel built have their personal reasons and aren't criminalized, although the story's focus is obviously on Elba and her quest to stop the building from being erected. The discussions between Elba and the community are not voiced over, but instead the discussions are kept brief and displayed in speech bubbles. I actually like that the game doesn't get bogged down in talking or being talked to, but gives you the direction and tips you need and not too much more. Each character you meet is distinct, and by the end of my playthrough, which only took about three to four hours, I could actually recall most of the names of people around town, like Clara the wildlife expert or Pepe the personal trainer. Playing as Alba, wandering freely around the town, made me feel like a kid again, and I couldn't wait to see what new things or animals I would discover on my walks. There is a main storyline which I've already mentioned, but there are several other side quests of sorts which can be found just by exploring the island and interacting with different people or objects. These range from picking up loose litter around trash cans to helping excavate and restore the castle ruins. And while there are tasks to complete, none of them are timed or rushed, and you never feel like you're in a hurry. You can wander and explore to your heart's content, which for me was a lot. One main aspect of the game is taking photographs with a cell phone of animals you've discovered and documenting your finds in a nature journal you carry along. There are over 60 different species of animals to find on the island, from many different birds to a fox to a dolphin and even a lynx. The photography aspect of the game is very well done and as someone who's taken plenty of animal photos, I think they've really nailed it. Trying to focus on flying birds is not an easy task in real life, and the game makes it challenging, but not so much so that it seems impossible. The camera even displays nice depth of field when focusing on a subject, something I did not expect, but the attention to detail in this game is phenomenal. Alba can also flip through her nature journal to see a list of unfound animals around the island and listen to their calls, hoping to find them more easily. Surprisingly, this was a lot of fun for me and didn't feel tedious at all. There were a few times I would open the nature journal and play the call of a bird and immediately hear it nearby and begin my search. Thank you. 
Most of the common animal species are easily spotted out in the open, but the more rare species are typically found through little tasks like picking up litter or assisting a neighbor with a project. Speaking of animal calls, the sound design is another aspect that stands out brilliantly. The soundtrack, when it plays, is light and relaxing, often using acoustic guitar to set the mood. And when it's not playing, you can hear the sounds of nature around you. Birds calling, squirrels chirping, and goats bleeding. It really just feels like you're on a jaunt through the countryside. Overall, both parts of the sound design truly enhance the relaxing nature of the game. Graphically speaking, the game played very smoothly for me, and I didn't notice any skipping frames. I did, however, notice a few hiccups, more so with the characters and movement. Like when having a discussion with one character, there might be another distracting character just repeating one motion over and over again in the background. Or there's this woman who has zero care for personal space. And then you have whatever this is. These occurrences were minor and rare, so I don't feel like they distracted from the gameplay, but just be aware that they could be there. Lastly, let's talk about the art of Elba. The characters are simple yet expressive, reminding me of the silly characters we all created on our first Nintendo Wii's. The world appears to be built in a low poly style and the colors are rich and inviting, just begging you to keep walking and skipping around the island long after your grandparents have called you home for dinner. There are also a few places around the island where you can choose to just sit and watch the world go by and take in the sounds of the wild. If I could install these moments as a screensaver on my PC, I would do it in a heartbeat. So the question is, should you play Alba a wildlife adventure? Yes. That's it. Full stop. You should play it. The game is normally $16.99, but until December 18th, you can play it for $13.59, but it would be well worth it at full price as well. It's such a relaxing game that will make you want to take a walk and spot some birds for yourself, and it'll make you feel more wholesome about life and about the state of our world. However, it will also remind you to begin taking small steps to care for the world, starting with the little things like picking up litter on your walk or helping out a hurt animal. So well done to the creators at Us2 Games for making a light and thoughtful game at the perfect time in our world and culture. Thank you so much for watching my review of Alba A Wildlife Adventure. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe so you can be notified when I publish my next indie game review, and let me know in the comments what you think of Alba. I'd love to hear from you and talk about this amazing game. Thank you to my 58 subscribers for your support, and I hope I get to know more of you very soon. For more indie game reviews and countdowns, check out the videos on your screen now, and I'll see you on the other side.